How's that, everybody? Welcome. All you early birds that jumped in already. I got my funky fight on. Oh, I don't know if you can hear it. I hope you can hear it. If you can hear me, just say hi in the chat. Um, and then say hi to everybody else. You know, we're a community here. We love each other and we love to spread the love. So if you can hear me, say hello. It would be great to know where you're from, even. So you're like, hey, it's Etienne here from Mama's Brewery the western cape in south africa and it's awesome to be here uh and then you can say hi so it's really nice you beautiful souls it's so great to have this every afternoon i look forward to it i love it um we made it to the other side of the weekend oh this is too funky come on now sorry i just this is an amazing ability that Music has. Music has this ability to just transform you, transport you. It's 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 so powerful. It it, it influences that, especially if it resonates deep within yourself. Like if it's something you in any case are feeling or that you've liked before. Oh man, ah. Alright, so anyway. <laughs> Um, if this is the first time that you're here, welcome. We are so happy to have you here. Warm arms around you, you beautiful soul. This is Lekka Live with Etienne every day at 1 p.m. for about 30 minutes. I don't take more, well, sometimes I do, but that's only because we're just having such a great time just hanging out. Um, so it's about 30 minutes every day and we have some interesting conversations. Sometimes I've got guests on, other times they aren't. Um, it's just, it's, it's, it's a place for us to connect as light creatures and like-minded people that are just out here looking to just explore whatever is available out there. And this is a place for you to try and check it out. So if you consider it to be something about, I don't know, if you, if you consider it to be closely linked to the tribe that you've been looking for, do that thing where you click on the link and I promise you, we will continue to have these amazing connections and share value and try to help each other because you can go fast by yourself but we can go far together uh today i want to talk about being a t i still can't get over it how lucky this is i i saw this once and i was like okay i'm gonna make me one and i was like yeah i'm gonna make me one i don't know if it's gonna fit and it, and it looks so pretty it's so nice imagine hey all the potential of what this anyway Today we're talking about being a teenager in your day. Now you, you can decide what that means. If you feel like you were a teenager the minute you started growing hair down there, or, or if you feel like you're a teenager the moment that you had a really impactful experience in your life, then that's you. Just let us know. Share your thoughts in the comments. We'd love to hear about you. Uh, I, I, you see, the thing with that being a teenager is... Things are quite strange because you're not just quite an adult, but you're also not really much of a kid either. And and where's my book even? Ek mag nooit as jong. I mag nooit. You'll get to know that I am a book and a pen dude. I love it. I love to just write things down. And obviously my phone is busy, so my notepad's out of the way. So anyway, there's some stuff. Like I just wrote some things. Like when I was thinking back, just what it was like. 13. I'm just like using the teens now because it's if you think we're talking about teenager and that's the smirn of 18, 18. Hi, man. Stop it with that. Not now. The weekend's over. There's some things I found when I was thinking back about what it was like being a teenager that you like grappled with that, that, that maybe, maybe I don't think you, I, let me rather say I, I really didn't think I was really aware of at the time because I had other important things to worry about, like the fact that, yes, like, I remember there was this day I had a pimple, a zet, a freaking table mountain 
you let me, let me just you don't understand like you don't you i'm talking about like a look like a stop sign glowing like a traffic light on the t- right here like it's not even like oh i can hide it or oh let me just this thing had like its own orbit it had a gravitational pull and i had to go to school high school Standard six, standard seven, I think. One of the two, I can't remember when I was flipping sweeties and my skin decided to hate me. But it was, I, I, I was destroyed. Are you kidding me? I'm like, I can't go to school. I, no, no, there's no way. These are freaking God. This is like a, a Google Maps pin on my forehead. There's no way. I can't. How am I going to? Yo, Aiden, what's up? It's not going to go like that. It won't be like, yo, Aiden, like, yo, Aiden, you stopped. What's that? <laughs> So those are the things that you're more concerned about as a teenager. What I was more concerned about as a teenager. And I kind of feel like I skipped over and just went through the flow and discovered these things without even really being aware of it. And, and like, there's no specific order. This isn't like the, the list of the list of things that teenagers <laughs> are like destined to go through. or sh- This is my list. Your list might look the same. It might look different. If it looks different or if it adds up, put it there, man. Then be part of the conversation and then say, no, it's in your list. That's cuck. I didn't have. But these, <laughs> these are just some of the things that I felt I was grappling with or, or I was navigating as a teenager, but I wasn't so aware of it because I was too concerned with other things. Sexuality. Now, w- when I even begin to say that, I know that even sometimes people start cringing. Like even me, I still have a little bit of like a residual effect of what I had been taught when it came to sex and sexuality and what I learned on my own through late night ETV movies and stealing porno magazines from shops. And and like, this is the thing where you don't really have a proper mentor or guide. It wasn't like all the guys were sitting together and they were like, yo, so what's up? Uh, listen, and, and I'm sorry if he sounds like he's from, from Centurion, but it's like, yo, yo, bro, what's up, bro? Uh, check it, uh, Etienne, uh, have you ever tried to like, you know, play with your winky? Uh, play with my winky. Yo, 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 like, like, just rub it a little bit. Like, you even just, like, you know, maybe you just, like, stroke it a bit. Like, just experience it a bit more, bro. Right? Like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about, what are you talking about Joe? Uh, all right, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to suggest something, but look, this is totally not gay. It's completely part of, like, just exploring life. I'm going to take your pants off. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we did not have these kind of conversations growing up. It was, I don't know, I wish we did. Not like to that level. I'm not like wishing someone's like, hey, don't take your pants off and I'm going to touch your willy. I'm just like, it would have been, it would have been so much easier to decide on which influences and which options that are out there I should model. Because I could get a feel of what's happening in most of the guys. Like there's so many myths when it comes just to sexuality, even back then as a teenager. Like... You know, um, you, you when it comes to masturbation even. Oh, my word. I remember when the guy... <laughs> Listen, if this makes you a little uncomfortable, I'm sorry. Uh, it's not here to make you feel uncomfortable. I just want to try to share some stuff that I feel could have been helpful when I was a teenager. And I know somebody's probably going to be like, hey, you know, there's children, there's teenagers. And you're good. I hope a teenager pops up on this thing and ends up seeing this. And it's like, wow, what is that Uncle Rasta talking about? And then be like, wow, I wonder if I should maybe ask my mommy and my daddy. And then have that conversation. But it wasn't like that. And only for me, my parents were very informative. My mother comes back from, from a clinical background, nursing, psycho- psychiatric nursing, personal care, that kind of thing, like you know, taking care of people. And my father was environmental health and then obviously in the ministry. So like the center of helping people was like always there. So for them, it was almost like, okay, well, here's the things. My mom put in a video first. It's, you know, for me, even literally, it was like one of these. I think it was even the one that was literally issued by the state. Uh, and it was like this video, press play, and yeah, I'm sitting. I can't even remember how old I was. I'm like, okay, cool. Don't know what's happening now, but cheers, mom. Penis. Pecker. Willy. I'm like, whoa, 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 wait, hey. <laughs> But it was informative, educational, and it was really constructive because it started the conversation that might have been even more awkward for my parents then. Because what, what a lot of the time, what a lot of, I mean, I remember in my generation, if you were born in the 80s, you might even be 
one of the same, even if you weren't born in the 80s. But it was a time where your parents were, they had you. If you're a firstborn, they had you. And it was like the same way you feel on, about your firstborn. It's like, oh, shit, I don't know <laughs> what I'm going to do. Yeah. <laughs> this is like, it's like, are you sure? Are you, you, you what? You, you, you what? You're going to, we can, oh, oh. Um, like for real, like there's no, like, you, you, what's the returns policy? Is there, <laughs> there's none of that. So they were just as surprised. They were just as shocked. They didn't know what the hell to do. So they were navigating it in an area, in a time that's so much different from ours, where you wouldn't be like just scrolling on the toilet one day at work while you're on lunch. And then here's this guy that's talking about being a teenager. And you just hear him talking about, yeah, like we didn't learn how to masturbate properly because there were so many rumors and so many different myths that went around it. It was like, yeah, there's different styles. Like I remember there was a thing they called the Khoisan style, where it was like you, you, you take your worm and you just... I'm like, I felt a little bit of offense later in life, but I was like, wow, cool. My people feature, salute. Um, but you know, like there's like a whole bunch of weird things that never were really spoken about. And where was it that I had to go for just to get my education on sexuality? Granted, it was amazing. It was the beginning of the internet. So I could go to like Playboy and delete all the important files to let the computer work because I didn't want my parents to find out about me going there. But that was my sources. No way to validate. No two-way conversation. It's not like a good, like, hey, Pele boy, um, I am a 13-year-old boy from South Africa, and I just wanted to find out, is it supposed to feel good if I put my neck massager on my private areas? Like, I know, obviously, kids don't have that conversation, but sexuality was one of the areas I was not too sure about. I didn't know what I was doing. You were literally just winging it based on what you heard somebody said that they were doing. Who's this? 2022 curse. All right, 2022 curse. I see your invitation. Let me have a look at, could you maybe just like frequent? I'd love to know. Is there got something to say about what we have to say? I'm, I'm going to quickly just finish this list. Let me know what, what you would like to add. Just say it in, I'd like to contribute because I feel like it's going to be helpful. And then I'll gladly accept your invitation. I'm just going to finish my list. So the thing that I was considering when I was a teenager that were not equipping me as a young boy to become a proper man was I wasn't able to navigate sexuality. I had no real source of reference when it came to navigating relationships other than just what I saw, which was my parents, my friends, parents, my aunties, my uncles, the people that I was, that were allowed in my house, my identity. It was never like a conversation in our house. We were like, okay, we're going to figure out who we are. Cause I know who I am, son. I am your father, but I'm more than that. I am. A, we didn't, I mean, sure. My dad and my mom, they were very progressive parents and they were really trying to do absolutely they did not try and they did their 10 times fold best of what they could. I'm just saying that these are the kinds of things that I feel that a lot of other people might have also been struggling with where it could have maybe I didn't turn out broken ish. I mean, we all, <laughs> we all have our flaws and our faults, but we're, a, we're, a, 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 we are, the culmination of the good and the bad things that happen to us. And that's where the power of us choosing to see which one influences us actually turns out who we are. But we really didn't have much influence on identity. So you adapted whatever it was. That's where that peer pressure shit came in. I never really had much authority understanding because it was just like, do as I say, because I am who I am and I'm saying it. So that was, there was no, like the way that society is set up now is yeah, sure. In the, in like, the subtext, it is definitely a uh, let's just do whatever the government says and this is what you're going to have to do. We saw that in lockdown and when we thought it wasn't possible because we thought it was all democracy and whatever, they took away basic rights and they took away things that we thought we weren't even supposed to. And even though it wasn't like taken away, it was just like, hey, let me just cover it up by saying it's this and this and this. But that's what authority was for me. It's like, it's just the police scene, then you either run because if you, you must have either done something wrong or you just do whatever the hell they say and whatever the hell they say. And that's why there's so many of our brothers and sisters that's sitting in cells and shit because they didn't understand how to navigate authority. Cops were like, yeah, this is what I But then it's like Himalayan rock salt. And just because he's got dreadlocks and he's wearing rasta colors, must be a dealer, looks tacky. Don't understand how to navigate that. Don't even know how to have the conversation about like, what are my rights? I mean, I have rights, but how do I even you Anyway, authority, whole thing. Never knew how to navigate that either really as a teenager. Drugs and alcohol. Now, this is the thing that bothers me because as much as people don't want to talk about it, it is in your life every single day. I have had contact and interaction with all types of people, all types of occasions and opportunities 
all kinds of substances even. And it wasn't like, this is the thing, like the fantasy of us thinking that there's always like some shady, weird looking, like you think you'll be able to identify who the person is that could be trying to get you addicted to a substance so that they can manipulate you into making money off of you. Or this could be somebody that is a sexual predator and you don't really get those identifiers. That, that profiling stuff only happens with real skill, technique and training, but you won't be able to tell. So it is Mr. So-and-so, the woodwork teacher, that's okay with you guys having a few beers after work, after work, after school, because there's nobody really there and you guys are working on your woodwork projects. So it's okay. I mean, you get him a beer too. Really weird, but it's okay. I mean, I'm going to let it slide. I'm, on, I'm, I'm 14 years old. Why do I not want to have a drink? I'm not allowed to do it in my house. So we don't really have that conversation. The conversation is like, don't drink and drive. Oh, alcohol can ruin your pregnancy. Oh, it can be violent and all these other. It's, like, it's really weird how, how we don't end up having the conversation around, okay, this is the thing that really is there. I'm rather going to teach you how to manage it. And not just teach you how to manage it. I'm going to help you understand the power this thing has on influencing your ability to choose and on the impact it has on everyone else that is beyond your perception that you think it can affect so that we can have a much better idea of, okay, do I want to do this or do I not? Because you as a human being, whether you're a baby or not, we're going to grow up to a point where you are free to choose and do as you please. And no one, nobody can do anything about it. If you decide to go out in your car and run someone over right now, you can do that. Sure, there's consequences. Don't get me wrong. I believe firmly everybody's allowed to freely to do what they want, when they want, how they want. But understand this. It doesn't come without the caveat of you're allowed to be, you're free to choose whatever you want. But you're not free to choose the consequences of that choice. So that was something that wasn't really explored. And I would have been so much more grateful if that was a conversation around drugs and alcohol, because I felt alcohol destroyed a big portion of what my potential was. Not that I'm knocking it. If that's your thing, do your thing. I think there's a reason why they started changing the messaging around to do it responsibly, because it really is. You need to be, this is no different from driving a car. You have to have your shit together because you can kill someone. The thing is, the last thing I'm going to leave you guys with that it wasn't like not really... Uh, scheming to get oh the, the, the what, last thing I want to leave you with was like everybody kept talking about like the future and like oh yeah you know it's like you must you know how important it is you must you're gonna miss school and oh you, 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 you fine cool that's great but now what? How, what there was there was just like this more it was fueled I felt even as a teenager and remember I had some time to meditate on this and to think back of my time as a teenager and you might not have and maybe you just jumped in and you don't really know what, what's going on here but we're just talking about what it was like being a teenager at your, in your day and navigating life as a teenager and I'm just going through some of the things that I wish might have been um, a bit more detailed than granular in its explanation and when I was like having an interaction with somebody it was more valuable to talk about the fundamentals of it like let's talk about the the fundamentals of what the future is like cool I'm gonna miss hanging out at school and I should appreciate the time here how do I do that y'all join school things that, but I don't like doing those things okay Let's try and find a way to make sure that the memories you have of school are not just smoking inches behind the tuck shop between breaks, between classes, scallum in the toilet, are not just of that one time when you got somebody to do that nasty R-rated thing to you in the classroom that was empty that nobody knew you guys were in or was about, but you got away with it. Why can't we have, like, I remember when the school never had anybody. Nobody, no function, no private sector, no public sector, not the teachers, not the principal, not the parents. Nobody came up to say, yo, we understand that there's a problem in our community. Our kids, there are so many kids that are coming to school that don't have food. They don't eat, so they don't have breakfast. How can we solve this? So what we decided is amongst a couple of our students, we've pulled together. We're going to have a car wash. We're going to do a bake-off. Sure, this won't probably apply now in 2020, whatever we're in, but... It, 
it in the in the nineties, early two thousands. That was the proactive way that could have helped me have a memory from school where I didn't just have something that made me feel I was part of something important, but that I built something out of nothing, out of identifying an opportunity or uh, identifying a problem, finding a way to solve that problem, and then connecting with other people with like minds to then make sure that the impact is ideal. How much further could we have gone other than just like, okay, yeah, you know, make sure that it people don't smoke an AC not big or, or it's like yo remember if you're trying to hide you being pregnant at school just wear your jersey and your blazer all year okay i think maybe that's a bit too real i just i don't know i felt a lot of mixed emotions when i had a chance to go and think back about what it was like growing up as a teenager for me and the one thing that i that kept coming back as a general theme was there was a gap and you know the universe hates a gap it will always fill that vacuum and I think that there's a gap that needs to be filled and is currently being filled because even if you're watching this and it, you maybe feel like that's what it's speaking to, what this whole purpose of this topic today is to try to see if we have the capacity to create a big brother or a big sister program which mentors young boys, young girls. I know there's probably already a whole bunch of stuff that exists. There's probably a bunch of others you could probably mention right now in the comments and say, hey, these guys already do that, which is fantastic. But I still think that that's not enough. There can always be more. There can always be another one. There can always be an option for our youth so that they can have a better planet or be better equipped to take care of the planet that we won't even be able to defend when we are just sitting there in our old age. It's not just about the selfishness of, yeah, make sure the youth are able to take care of the thing so that we can live out our twilight days, smoking joints and drinking whiskey on the porch, reminiscing about the days when we were doing coke lines in the parking lots, or when we were running a Fortune 500 company off of a mobile phone using mobile data that was disconnected on a load shedding thing that felt like it was a disaster and nobody was able to back me up. Or you, I could keep the list going. I think that if, if we can find the, the, the strength to identify the problem, it is your responsibility to at least try to go for a solution. So in my link, in my bio, there's a connection to my community where we continue to do this kind of thing and it's growing. We're almost in the double digits. And I love my community because it's not my community, it's our community. So we get to share, we get to continue the conversation, we get to build connection, we get to impact on what we feel really needs impact by finding like-minded people it doesn't mean that just because you join the community and you don't see that this is something that if you form part of that you have to do it it's not how we roll consider it have a look through the rest of my videos what i normally end up doing is just like comedy and stuff but if you missed a live and you wanted to catch up on it in the link as well you can catch up on the lives on youtube and i'm only sending you there because it's the one place I can put something this long that would live there that's forever. Even if you just see 10 minutes and you want to maybe watch it again later, it will stay there. It's there for you whenever you want. And I know everybody gets busy. So now we're going to get over to the part that's the most important where you get to have your say. So I'd love to have you share your thoughts. What was it like being a teenager in your day? Uh, and if you know of any other big brother, big sister mentor programs or organizations or something and i'm not talking about the big ones like boys town that take care of like boys that have like got issues or problems or you know like not i'm not just talking about i'm talking about like mentor programs where you can have i am i my field of expertise is consulting marketing and content creation not just for the sake of like getting likes and stuff but like literally communication and 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 messaging that's like really what i end up doing and i've been doing that for a very 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 long time and I feel if there is someone, especially in my community, and, and I know that that's a problem, and I've been doing this, like reaching out, and I know a lot of people have also been reaching out for a while, and sometimes you don't get responses, but just because you don't get a response doesn't mean you give up. Keep on trying. Somebody will say, yeah, pick me. So I'll reach out and I'll be like, yo, is there somebody that's maybe interested in learning some stuff about digital marketing, um, online e-commerce? Is there somebody who wants to learn about uh, affiliate marketing or running a business from home or small to medium enterprises? They want to learn about consulting. They want to learn about speaking. They want to learn about talent development. Like if there's somebody that wants to do that in Marmersbury and they're like, yo, I'm a kid at school and you have already been trying to do this. And all you need is somebody to be like, let me give you some of the stuff 
that can help save you time and help you learn so much more so that you can do shit that we don't even know how to do yet. That's what I'm talking about. If you've got someone like that, share it with us. If you want to be part of something like that, you want to start growing. I don't even know why I'm doing the pitch now. Because like I was saying in my group, I'm like, I don't even know what's happening yet. That's just this thought because I was like thinking about being a teenager. And I was like, yeah, it'd be really helpful if there was. Um, it's really powerful because I've always wanted to have a big brother program specifically to help young entrepreneurs, especially in communities where there's not really much funding. But to help them through seminars and the webinars and to have access to the internet and all that. I really want to commit to them. So I'm building like lots of stuff around there. But we never really had a help me teach me how to touch my toilet. Anyway, it's enough from me. Let's hear from you. Let's quickly go to the comments and find out what you guys have to say. Uh, Naz, greetings all the way from PE. My favorite PE joke. Train uh, form answer. Conductor goes door to door. Knock, 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 knock. And he asks the people because the next stop is PE. He knocks. Do, 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 do. He's like, hello. PE. Everyone's like, yeah, click, 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 click. Goes like this for a couple of doors. Gets to the last door. Knocks on the door. Do, 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 do. PE guy shouts from the other side, near cock. <laughs> anyway, I just got nothing to do with it, but PE, I love it. There's welcome, my sister. Nadia, welcome. Hi, everybody. So, see, this is the kind of community we have people, people that see you because you matter. 1818. I, Naz, you know what I'm talking about? That thing that makes you do the moves. That makes you feel like you're on MTV Africa or MTV Base or Jam Alley even. <laughs> hey, young, that thing, that teenager. Hello, my man says, Goeiedag, Ashanti. Welcome. So glad to have you here. From my side, I bloomed late. I only started blooming at 25 years old. Wow. That is amazing. 25 years old. And that's perfectly fine that you bloomed that late. I would be fascinated to find out how the navigating of like your teens was that, that, that that's interesting Whew. anybody else also a little late bloomer and i'm not just talking about like like you finally was like hey how's it you check out i got friends now what and boys you're not just like hey how's it uh yeah my name's still stefan <laughs> Naz, uh it doesn't make me feel comfortable at all i have oh uncomfortable at all i have three boys and would want to understand <gasps> I've only got a little girl, but from from one boy to a, to a mother of three boys, I, I'm a brother and I have a younger brother. Boys fight. They have a way of resolving their issues, but that doesn't mean that you should leave them to just resolve their issues on their own. They have to understand that there is that support and there is that guidance and that is that love. And I know you probably already know this. Um, for them, available, even if you have no fucking idea, pardon my French, of what you're actually doing. And th you are just reacting because a lot of the things that are, we as kids, and this I'm only re really realizing as I am a parent, is that you as a kid, you don't really compute the fact that your parents might not have dealt with this ever in their life before. Or they might have, but you're a completely different child to the brother or sister. So good luck, my sister, having three boys. Oh, power to you. Now, those are the boys that I'm speaking about. I'm hoping to have had a positive influence on them somehow through a network of whatever they find interesting of somebody that sees this or that's connected in our community that's like, yo, I'm a drummer. I actually do this as a session drummer. And uh, instead of just one-on-one, -on -one, all the kids that are looking to maybe get interested in finding out, I have a specific vlog designated to helping young boys learn and navigate how to not only play the drums, learn how to use the drums, uh, what's that, arrange the drums, but also how to monetize and leverage that skill in real world practical application. And then have all those young boys learn from that instead of just like, mommy, well, Lee So <laughs> Nadia, my mom took out a book from the library, Diagrams with Male and Female Parts and Reproductive Systems. Amazing, because that's even better, because then it's like, okay. <coughs> <coughs> How boss <laughs> That's great because what your what your mom did was your mother taught you that if you are looking for information on something you're not sure about, go and find a source. It is out there. Qualify the source, find it, but you will find it. Powerful message, powerful lesson. Ten points to Mama Door. Uh, what they go through, so I can help. Sorry, don't know why I couldn't complete the sentence. 
Uh, I don't know if you oh, well, I don't understand what they go through so I can understand. Oh, yeah, that is quite tr tricky. Like, even now, if you're a parent and you have, like, a, a toddler that's, like, in the two, like, what I've realized is they are literally going through learning all of the emotions at once. And, and they don't understand it. They've never, they've never felt angry and understood that, holy crap, this is anger. And, oh, this is joy. They're still busy learning that. We have had, some of us have had 30, 40, 50 years and still don't know. So give the kids a break. Give yourself a break. Take the time to take it at the pace that it, you know it will require for you to get that answer because it's so much more rewarding and it lays the foundation for how they will do it. So you are so correct. We got to learn. We have to take the time. I never had the talk. <gasps> Z, you never had the talk. Wait, hold on. But how old are your kids and where did they get the information? What's up, buddies? All good. Mr. Snowden! Something I wish was a uh, norm with parenting in the 80s is boundaries. <gasps> that boundaries is a conversation for a whole nother day. Because I think that, ooh, I know you probably know this already. J. Marky a dear to of Slaytom and my ice knee. Like, but it's my room, isn't it? This is <laughs> Didn't you like say, like, I overheard you talking, like, yeah, yeah, also, that's a move, I've got a weird heel, let's see, I'm going to come out to a claim, 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 to know that my job is not just to feed you, wash you, put clothes on you, make sure that you don't die and that you know how to communicate at least the basic stuff. I have to prepare you for life by giving you everything that I have learned from my experience and taking the time. That's the reason why it takes you so long before you can actually speak so you can absorb more. And that's the reason why it will then set the tone for how we will interact and engage. It's hard as shit and every day is going to be different, but you need to be conscious about it and keep trying. Trust me. There's days I even feel like I don't want to cry. Like, I just don't know. Why did it? Why? 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 Why must I ask permission to change your nappy? And it's just part of life. We still love you. Sorry, but what does your background say? I can't see all the writing. Oh, sorry, makeup by G uh, Gil. It says, being a teenager, share your thoughts. Uh, the community link is in the bio. My name is Etienne Davids, and this is my daily live. Um, so I hope that clears it up for you. Oh, nice. Look there, already in there, Auntie A. I love it. What an amazing community. Consider joining this community and consider continuing the conversation with us in the Telegram group. I'm so sorry. I think we might have run out of time. So I'm just going to quickly read the rest of the comments to see if there's any questions uh the generation of parents could really break these destructive cycles oh that is so i just want to highlight this um ashanti listen so that is so powerful the new generation of parents could really break those destructive cycles of the past something that i want to leave with you and what, what resonates with me was also i could spend all the time i have blessed as a father of the most amazing talented incredible little human being that the world has yet to discover I can spend all my time worrying about all the stuff that my parents did that, to screw me up or that they could have done better or that they, or I can spend that time focusing on how I can make sure that my little girl doesn't just not get, doesn't just get what I didn't get, but has exactly what will equip her for the world that we both don't know is going to come because you don't know what it's going to be like when she's a grown up. You don't know what he's going to be like when he has to be in your shoes or in your position, hunting for work, trying to have a conversation with a girlfriend that left him or boyfriend that left him or boyfriend that decided that he's no longer wanting to be with one person. Why I root everything in love, honesty, and just open mindedness is because it allows you to use agility to just adapt and to continue living in a life of peace, love, and happiness. And I know it's an idealos idealistic, idealistic dream, and it might not be possible, but at least it will be possible for as long as I am able to create content and be able to connect, connect with you, for as long as we're able to have a conversation, and for as long as when, as long, for as long as there is breath in my body, I will never stop lighting the torch. 
no matter how many times it goes out. You've been incredible. Everybody, thank you so much. If you'd like to continue the conversation, link in the bio, click on the Telegram group. If you've missed today's live and you just jumped in, the replay will be up on YouTube. Link in the bio later this evening after I put my princess down. So give me some time. Be, be nice. Don't be mean. Don't come for me. Um, we will also be doing a bit more of these. We'll be doing this every day. For an hour, a half an hour in lunchtime, so feel free to join us. Follow if you want to join the community, and we love everyone. So if you want to maybe look for some help, if you're looking for someone, just take a shot. Who knows? The person that you've been looking for that for that job that you know you want, the person that can help you with filling out your taxes that you could be looking for, the guy that might be able to give you the heads up on what's the best trend for your online store could be in our community or it could be you. So consider joining it. We love you. We appreciate you. And by we, I mean all of us over here at FTV. Uh, shout out. So the, let's quickly, uh, the film Meister, thank you for coming. So appreciative of you. The Retro Collect ZA, love them. They have great retro stuff as well. Um, you have got 100% big facts there. Aisha, thank you so much for being here. Z, thank you so much. JJ, laat aangekomen. Jij moet maar die replay catch van aan, girl. It's nice to have you here. Johan, welcome. And to every single person that took the time to come and write a little message, like, comment, share, whatever. I appreciate love you. Have a great rest of the day. I'll see you tomorrow at one or I'll see you later in the Telegram group. Hey! Okay, oh, yes, like that was like the intro. It was the intro. But tomorrow.